Hello, Accelerated Math 7 8 students. We are working in Module 11, and we are going to start Lesson 11. And Module 11, Lesson 11 is called Slicing a Right Rectangular Prism with a Plane. Um, the page numbers are going to start getting different because you have to determine how many pages you're going to use with the um, notes from the iPad. So I don't have a specific page number. Uh, but the name again is Slicing a Right Rectangular Prism with a Plane. So let's take out my iPad and take a look at this. Okay, give it a second while it is um, getting set up. So again, slicing a right rectangular prism with a plane. Okay, we have this. All right, so we're playing with this. We'll get better. All right, so slicing a right rectangular prism with a plane. Now, some of you are thinking, oh my gosh, what in the world is she doing? I'm not talking about an airplane, okay? I'm talking about the geometrical term, which is a plane, and we'll talk about that in just a minute. A right rectangular prism is usually, an example of this would be like a stick of butter, or another example could be a cereal box, or another example could be um, the bookshelf that I have in the classroom that has all of our tools on it, okay? A right rectangular prism, okay? If I drew a picture of it, a picture of a right rectangular prism would look something like this. Now, excuse me because it's not drawn to scale, but that kind of gives you an idea of what a right rectangular prism is. And the reason we know it's a right is because we have right angles that create the structure. Okay, so that's a right rectangular prism. All right, so our goal for today. Today we will learn about slicing an object and figuring out what the outcome is. Okay, question. How does a slice represent being sliced from an object? That's a little bit tricky. Let's read it again. What does a slice represent after being sliced from an object? Mrs. Nelson, it would help if you could read one more time. What does a slice represent after being sliced from an object? I don't know. We'll, we'll figure it out in just a minute. Things to know. Things to know that you need to know. A solid is a three-dimensional shape of a given shape. A solid is a three-dimensional shape of a given shape. Now, that's kind of confusing, but this is what I want you to think about. A rectangular prism is a 3D rectangle. So the shape, this given shape, would be the rectangle, and then we make the 3D of it means that it grows into a three-dimensional figure. A cube is a 3D square, and a sphere is a 3D circle. So hopefully that helps you with a solid. Those are what solids are. Okay. Um, the building blocks of geometry. This is really, really helpful and really, really important. I think everything after we do this will make more sense to you. So the building blocks of geometry. What makes a shape three-dimensional? Think of a stack of post-it notes. One post-it is not three-dimensional, but when you put a whole bunch together, it becomes three-dimensional. So take a look at it. This right here is a post-it all by itself. It's flat, it's 2D, it has no depth. But as soon as you start stacking the post-its on top of each other, what does that one single post-it turn into? it turns into a three-dimensional figure. So this one right here, for example, would be a rectangular prism because the post-it is in the shape of a rectangle, and then when you stack them on top of each other to get depth, they turn into that shape, okay? So you gotta think of the post-it as a slice. So if we were to take this post-it stack and start pulling the slices off, pretty soon, we would be down to a 2D shape of just the rectangle. So that's what we're talking about when we say slices. So what does a slice represent after being sliced from an object? The slice represents the 2D shape. So what does it represent? The 2D shape, okay? And hopefully this little post-it example will help you understand it, okay? All right, so we can say that three-dimensional shapes can be created by stacking the slices of the original shape, just like we did. We took all these post-its, stacked them together on top of each other, and then all of a sudden you got depth, okay? 
So in geometry, slices represent planes. Let me say that again. In geometry, slices represent planes. So again, we're not talking about the thing that flies. We're talking about the individual planes that they stack on top of each other. And one after the other, after the other, after the other gives us depth. And it turns into a three-dimensional shape. Planes do not have a definition, but they are used as symbols to represent a certain area in space. A plane is a representation of a flat surface, one that extends without edges forever. A lot of kids and a lot of adults and a lot of people think of a plane in geometry like a piece of paper. Okay? Two planes are parallel if they do not meet. So an example with a drawing of this, and I'm going to move the iPad for just a minute so you can see this. But an example of this statement where it says two planes are parallel if they do not meet is if I draw what we're drawing or what we're talking about as a plane. So I want you to pretend that this is a plane right here. Kind of like if I was holding a piece of paper in the air. Well, if I have another plane and it's sitting parallel to it, it would look like that. So imagine this one's on the top, this one's on the bottom. Okay? So you would say that these two par planes, this is a plane right here, this is a plane right here, you would say that these two planes are parallel because no matter how far they extend in all directions, are they ever going to touch? The answer is no. They will never meet. They do not touch. So those are called parallel planes. Okay? Now, however, the next part, two planes are perpendicular if one plane contains a line that is perpendicular to the other plane. This one's a little bit harder to draw, but we're going to try. Okay, so what this means is if we have a plane, again, think of a piece of paper, okay? You have a plane that's holding in the air. If I take another plane and it happens to cross this plane, you can't see that underside, right? Do you see it? So this plane goes this way forever and this way forever, and this way forever, right? It, and a plane it extends in all directions forever. This plane is going to go this way forever, this way forever, this way forever, and this way forever. Where do they intersect? Right here on this line is where they intersect. I hope you guys can see what I'm drawing. So these planes are called perpendicular because they intersect on a line that crosses both planes. Okay, so those are called perpendicular planes. This is a perpendicular plane. These are parallel planes. Okay, so I hope that helps you understand those two things. All right, so hopefully we're getting a better idea of what a plane is. The plane section of a figure consists of all the points where the plane meets the figure. So again, the plane section, especially on this drawing right here, the plane section where they meet, is all along this straight line right here. That would be all of the places that they meet. So the plane section of a figure consists of all the points where the plane meets the figure. Another name for a plane section is a slice. So we are slicing this plane by this plane. Okay? Um, going back up to the post-it note idea, here's the plane. Where they meet is they actually are stacked on top of each other. So all the points, when you stack the papers on top of each other, so let's try this one. This one right here is one piece of paper. But if I stack this on top of it and I stack this on top of it, now instead of having just a 2D, we actually have, do you see how it's turning into a 3D? Because it has depth, okay? So trying to visualize that is a little bit tricky, but I think once we practice it a little bit more in class, it'll help you, okay? So the plane sec section represents a slice. Slices are the planes. Slices, when stacked on each other, go from 2D, two-dimensional, to three-dimensional. So let's go back up to the top. Today we will learn about slicing an object and figuring out what is the outcome. So what do we know is the outcome when you slice a figure. Well, when you slice a figure, you're creating the plane that it was or the two-dimensional figure that it started from. Okay?
The question, what does a slice represent after being sliced from an object? Hopefully you can figure that out. And then really the only way to help us understand this and figure this out is by practicing and playing with it. And that's what we'll be doing in class when we get together tomorrow. All right, my kiddos, that's all I have for today. And I will see you all tomorrow.